for the Seri Brums, it has a lot of functions and you need to know in our syllabus which part of the Seri Brums carries uh, what kinds of functions. For example, the front part of the Seri Brums okay, is responsible for memory, learning and thinking. And uh, this part here is responsible for smell and taste. Uh, There's a small part here is, which is responsible for speech. And then uh, here is for hearing. And this is reasonable because our ear is around here. Okay, so this is hearing. And then uh, at the back here, we have this uh, area which is uh, responsible for vision. And here, okay, is for movement and there's a small part here for sensor stimuli of skin and muscle, okay? So you need to know this if you can remember, okay? Yeah, I hope that you can remember. Because sometimes in the exam, they will ask you what will happen if uh, this part of the cerebrum is injured, okay? And this part is uh, responsible for vision. So if this part is injured, then you may lose your vision, okay? So that is the cerebrum, okay? So for brain injury, for other parts, okay, this is a famous question. Okay, in the exam, they will ask you the, what will happen if this part of the brain is injured or this part of the brain is injured. Okay, for cerebrum, it, it doesn't point to any area. Okay, overall, okay, if cerebrum is injured, then it can cause uh, paralyze, lose hearing, lose sight. And it depends on the regions of the memory and also lose memory. Yeah? Okay, lose memory. So that's for uh, cerebrum. Eh? And for cerebellum, because it's responsible for the balance of the body, so the injuries of cerebellum will cause uh, unable to balance the body. And mandula oblongata, injuries of mandula oblongata will cause the involuntary action stop and can cause pain. Why? Because some of the involuntary action is very, very important for life. For example, heartbeat. Heartbeat is involuntary actions. But if this action stop, that means that uh, the person will die. Eh? Okay, so this is the effects of brain injury. Make sure that you remember all of this because these are famous questions in your test or exam. Eh? Voluntary and involuntary actions. Okay, voluntary action is the actions that we can control by will. It's actions that we want to do. Eh? Okay, for example, dancing. If we want to dance, we can dance. If we want to walk, we can walk. So these kinds of action is called the voluntary actions. And then there are also another kinds of actions which is involuntary. Involuntary action which is not controlled by will. Eh? Example, knee jerk, heartbeat, sneezing. This is something that you can't control. Okay? Yeah, it just happened automatically. And these are the, the involuntary actions. Um, Voluntary action is the actions that can control by will. Examples, dancing, running, boxing, involuntary action, not controlled by will. Example, knee jerk, heartbeat, sneezing, sneezing, okay? Hachi, sneezing. Peristalsis of the intestine, okay? Our intestines uh, actually is in constant motions, huh? okay? Contract and, and release, contract and release. This is to move the food along the intestine. Eh? Contrictions and dilations of pupils. Our pupils can contract and dilate to control the amount of light going into our eye. Sweating is also involuntary. Digestions of food. You don't need to think how to digest the food. Your bodies will digest. We will carry out these actions automatically. So it's involuntary. Yawning. Okay. Yawning is involuntary. Um, you need to remember this uh, involuntary action because sometimes in the exam they may ask you which of the following is involuntary action. So you need to remember that. Huh? Okay, so this is the comparisons of voluntary and involuntary actions.